for this afternoon, we have a couple of sessions lined up, and I have a gentleman here, Brother Marlon, why don't you come, to the, come on up here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it last night about a month and uh, or so ago, I saw an article where a pastor had taken his own life, unfortunately. He was a pastor of a progressive church out in California. He was in charge of some mental health uh, helps and had some things in place. It, it struck a nerve with me because I'd recently um, done some things on Facebook and added to a group of some pastors dealing with some mental depression, anxiety, and things like that. And Lord put on my heart to call Brother Monty, who's going to teach a session out later on. In the process, Pastor Lett called me and said, hey, I'm with this man, Pastor John Morrow, and I'd never met the man before. I met him for the first time this morning. All right, but I talked to Pastor, talked to him on the phone, and believed that God would have him here for a couple of reasons. One, I think it'll be, I believe it'll be a help to us. But something that, that someone said to me when I was seeking some counsel on this, they said, wow, they, they said, if men who are struggling with some of these thoughts and uh, mental burdens could feel like they could have somebody to talk to, that would relieve a great burden and pressure in their life. And so Brother Morrow has traveled through some of that. I asked him to share his testimony with us about 10 minutes, then we'll continue on. But basically, I've got some guys here who are available, who are willing to talk, who are willing to help, because, you know, the Lord is that big, and we don't want to look down or, because someone is struggling, say, oh, just man up, just grow up. All right? Terrible. Terrible. And maybe you haven't dealt with it, but that doesn't make you better or worse. It just is. And so I think the Lord has, has, I believe, guided us in this. And so I asked Brother Mar to come, flew him out here to give your testimony and then be available. I know he's willing to talk to anybody. He told me that. And so you tell us what God's doing in your heart and life, and it's great. Thank you, sir. All right, I would ask you to just take your Bible. I want to just read a little bit of Scripture before I start. And uh, I've got so much that I'd like to say, but I, I, maybe I can say that to you after if you need some help with it. Uh, try to cram it in here. But I want to read in Job chapter 23. The Bible says, Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job went through a time where he, you know the story of Job, but he went through a time where he couldn't find God. He couldn't understand why this was happening. And uh, even though Job didn't know where God was, God knew right where Job was. And in due time, God took care of it. I'm going to pray just for a minute. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity. And I, Lord, I pray that, uh, as I have prayed, Lord, that you would help somebody. Lord, maybe if it's not today, but maybe in the future, there's somebody that's going to need uh, some of this. And I just pray that you bless and help me in Jesus' name. Amen. We're discussing kind of a heavy topic this afternoon, I think, so I want to just begin with a little bit of levity, all right? We're coming up on the Christmas season shortly, and I read about a husband and wife uh, out Christmas shopping. They were in a busy shopping center just before Christmas, and the wife noticed suddenly that her husband was uh, missing, and they had a lot to get done, so she called him on the cell phone, and she said, where are you? She demanded. You know we have a lot to do today. He said, do you remember the jewelry shop that we went to about 10 years ago and you fell in love with that diamond necklace? I couldn't afford it at the time and I said that one day I'll get it for you. Little tears began to flow down her cheek and she got all choked up. Yes, I do remember that jewelry store, she said. Well, I'm in the gun shop next door to that, was his response. <laughs> it's good for us to laugh a little bit, isn't it? The Bible says laughter uh, doeth good like a medicine. I want to talk about Charles Spurgeon for a little bit. Um, he had a great sense of humor. If you've read any of his stuff, uh, he's a lot of wit. And uh, some people uh, know that about him. A lot of people have read him, his sermons, and, and greatly helped. But um, some people know that he suffered from depression. And despite the many blessings and victories that he experienced, he often suffered with 
what he called causeless depression. In other words, he didn't know why this was happening to him. Spurgeon said, I mean, I'm going to quote some things that he said. He said, my spirits were sunken so low that I could weep by the hour like a child and yet not know why or what I wept for. He often called himself a prisoner and wept without knowing why. He said, I pity a dog who has to suffer what I have. He said, my mind can descend far lower than my body for there are bottomless pits. In one writing he wrote, I have been ill for about five weeks and during that time I have been brought into deep waters of mental depression. He said, they were, there are dungeons beneath the castle of despair as dreary as the abodes of the lost and some of us have been in them. One night, in fact, Charles Spurgeon went to his pulpit to preach on a Sunday night, and he, he couldn't preach, and he left the pulpit and didn't preach that night. I don't think that his condition hurt his ministry. I think it actually helped it. Most people have not heard about his depression, the common person, but they've read his sermons. They've been greatly helped by that. And probably part of the reason that he had these good sermons is because he had this, and he had to depend upon God. And so I do think it helped him. He called his depression a prophet in rough clothing. His weakness reminded him of his great need of God. Spurgeon saw his depression as ordained by God for God's glory and his sanctification. He pressed through the depression with the conviction that everything that happened to him was from God. He did not believe that his sufferings were an accident. He said, my trials were measured out by God and sent to me by his arrangement of weight and quantity. Spurgeon's sufferings made him a better preacher and a better pastor to his people. Now I have to say, I, I've read some of those things about Spurgeon and I had no idea what he was talking about. I would read about the, what is this deep pits of despair? I never understood it. If you asked me 11 months ago, uh, what anxiety and depression was. I really wouldn't know. I would say, well, anxiety, I think somebody has anxiety, they're worried. They're, they're uh, you know, just, they're scared about riding that roller coaster and they get scared. I would say depression is something, it's, uh, it, uh, <clears throat> somebody's down a lot and just kind of sad and having a bad day. If someone would have come to me as a pastor and said, I need some help, I would, have, I would have prayed with them and I would have tried to give them some Bible verses and said, try to memorize these verses and you, know, you need to trust the Lord. But I doubt I would have been much help to them because I didn't understand. I did have someone come to me several years ago and uh, it was one of our Christian school teachers and actually her husband wanted me to talk with her and uh, she had had a miscarriage and ever since she had a miscarriage, she, uh, she really just struggled. And she, she, could, she came to the spot where she couldn't even teach at our school. She had to stay home. And she'd come and talk to me and she'd just cry. Said, I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know why uh, you know, I feel this way. And she, she would stay at home. She didn't want her husband to leave to go to work. She didn't want to get it out of the house and she struggled. I found out later that she would come into her classroom and she'd give the kids an assignment. And then she'd lay down behind her desk and just cry and tremble. I prayed with her, but I didn't understand. Now I do. I couldn't do much to help her then, but now I think I can. And I'm gonna try, brother, how you wave at me if I go over, okay? Just kinda of tell what happened to me. I'll try to go quick here. How much time do I have, five minutes? Okay. Um, on the first Sunday of, our first Saturday of January this year, um, I woke up sick and uh, four o'clock in the morning and um, had body ache and fever stuff, and my daughter had been sick, so I thought, well, I just got what she got. The only difference was that my chest hurt, really tight. My chest was tight and my back hurt. And uh, so I, I just wasn't able to preach that Sunday. It got worse. The next week, it, it, the body ache went away, but my chest was still tight in my back. So I, I went to the doctor and uh, on the weekend. The doctor said, well, you need to go see a regular doctor on Monday. Make a long story short, went to the doctor, explained my symptoms. And uh, she said, um, we're gonna do a chest X-ray and we're gonna do EKG. 
went and had those tests done, came back in. She came in and said, the chest x-ray looks good, but the um, EKG says you had a, you've had a heart attack at some point in your life. I'm 40 years old. I was shocked. I said, really, what, what does that feel like? I haven't, all I know is this, my chest has been tight for a couple weeks. She said, well, sometimes you don't feel it, sometimes that you, um, you do. So, make a long story short, she sent me for tests, they checked my, my blood, they checked my, uh, um, they sent me for a stress test where you get on that treadmill and, and, and uh, do all that kind of stuff, they pump that stuff in your veins, they take all these x-rays and pictures, and, and there, there was time in between um, all of this going back and forth to the hospital where I didn't know what was going on. Everything came back good. You're fine. There's no physical problems. Um, but it was it was a building a building up in in my life and until one day I was uh, waiting for another test to come back and I was sitting in my living room in my house and um, my children were doing their homework and my wife was doing something and I f I had this strange experience I felt like I didn't belong in my own house it was the strangest thing I ever had had experienced I didn't know what that was very troubling. To me, I found out later it's something called depersonalization. You can read about it. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of of what I went through from uh, physical suffering. I began to suffer mental suffering. Um, my chest hurt was the physical things. My back, I'd wake up in the middle of the night just drenched in sweat, um, trem trembling, extreme fear, terror. Didn't know why. I'm not a fearful person. I've lived 40 years with a good life, never had any physical problems. It just, wham, it, it hit me. Um, i got to try to hurry. Um, anyways, the, I'm trying to explain to you about the, the mental suffering, I think has to do with the depression part of it, uh, was that the anxiety went into this. Someone said that anxiety and depression are, the same, are two sides of the same coin. And... Um, the physical suffering, I thought I was having a heart attack. They said, your heart's fine, but I, I, why am I, if I'm fine, why is my heart, why is my chest hurt, why is my back hurt? I kept going through all that. Um, but then it went to, to the mental suffering. Um, it's the worst thing I've ever been through, Me the mental part. Extreme mental agony where you're, I felt disconnected, I felt, um, I can't even describe it to you. The worst thing I ever could go through. And uh, so I think I, th I know a little bit about maybe what Spurgeon was talking about. And um, there was no peace, there was no joy. I couldn't, I couldn't eat, I lost my appetite. I couldn't read. I mean, I could physically force myself to say the word, but I, I just, I couldn't stand it. I had to put it down. I forced myself to read my Bible every day, one verse at a time. I'd read a verse, set it down, read a verse, wait a little bit. I said, I got to get my mind off this. I try to watch TV, get my mind into uh, something. I had to turn it off. I couldn't watch it. Couldn't eat, couldn't read, couldn't, couldn't do anything. All I could do is sit in my room, with, sit with a blanket and just sit there. My two-year-old son would come in to say, hi, I love my son. I couldn't stand for him to sit on my lap. I'd sit for him a little bit and I'd say, you gotta go. I didn't want to talk to anybody. And I was, I was terrified, and that's why I want to tell this, because somebody might have this, or uh, so you might meet somebody that does, and they need some help. I, didn't, I had no idea what was going on. And it, terif it just was, I found out later, it was, there's some of this is the, the fight or flight thing. You've heard of the fight or flight. And uh, your body, um, um, when you're walking down a path, Someone jumps out at you at night, you're either going to hit them or you're going to run. Have you ever driven your car and you almost hit a deer or somebody pulled out in front of you and you almost, and your, your heart's pounding like that and you got that adrenaline rush? This is what I had 24 7. Just the adrenaline. It didn't stop day or night. I couldn't sleep. I'd go to bed. I'd sleep for two hours. I'd be up the rest, the rest of the night. Days and days and days like that. And it was the, it was the adrenaline, it was the um, fight or flight thing. And um, it just, it just, it, 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 kept, it, it took over my life. The other thing that happened was this strange, um, I felt like oh, I'd feel these waves of something come over me. My arms would burn, just literally just, you feel like you're on fire. I was so sick inside, I can't describe how I felt. 
I had no idea, what, what, what is this? And uh, I kept saying, what's happened to me? What, what's happened to me? I'm not, what's happened to me? And it was so strange, I was not myself. And God, why won't you help me? What, what's wrong? And um, I couldn't get any relief. And um, so the doctor, I went to the doctor for a checkup. She said, everything's fine. She said, I said, well, I'm having some of these strange things. She said, well, I'll give you some, some medication. And one of them, she said, it won't help you for six months. But um, the other one would ha help in about uh, half an hour after you take it, you know, but it only lasts about four hours. So um, I took the medicine. I went to our church, and I, I, I didn't preach for f three months. I went to our church. I, I, I told my dad, I said, I, I want to have ask that you'd uh, anoint me with oil and pray over me. That's what the scripture says. Any man sick? That's a humbling thing for you as a pastor to ask your people to come get around you and pray. You, you're the one supposed to be helping them. But you're so low and you don't know what's wrong. And I... It was a sweet time. I didn't know what was going on. People were crying. People were praying. Afterward, I, I didn't intend. I'd, I'd sit in the back. But I went up to the pulpit and I, I kind of explained to him, I think this is what's happening to me. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm, I'm out of time. I'll have to, if you want to talk to me about it more, I'd I love to tell you how God has helped me. Uh, I found a website uh, called anxietycenter.com, center, C-E-N-T-R-E, -E, that had lists of physical side effects and mental side effects from anxiety and depression, which I thought all these things were my heart physical, uh, chest pain, stabbing chest pain, all these things that I was experiencing, I was sure it was my heart. You can have all these pains because of anxiety. That helped me because at least I knew what it was. This is what is happening to me. Uh, another thing was that uh, Pastor David Jeremiah, somebody sent me a sermon by him. When he was 35, he, uh, he said he, he was studying in his study and he said all of a sudden he felt like somebody took a belt and cinched it up around his chest. That's super tight. He didn't know what happened. Um, he ended up, went through the doctors like I talked about, went through all this stuff. The doctors finally came to the conclusion after all the tests, he said, you, you, it's your problem is stress. But it manifests itself in uh, physical ways. And um, anyway, he needed to sleep, he, he needed to exercise, and he needed to eat better, and he came out of it. But um, I went to the hospital, emergency room, all this kind of stuff I could tell you about later. Uh, God has helped me, and uh, there's, there's other things I could say. I know my time is gone, so, all right, thank you, brother.